to standing. At such exhibits, the average person was able to learn such basic facts as that the atom is submicroscopic in size and that the forces which hold it together are the same as those which keep the universe in balance. Around the particles which form the nucleus of the atom, other electrically charged particles called electrons constantly revolve like planets around the sun. It is within the nucleus itself that the cosmic energy is locked. To release this energy, laboratory machines generating millions of volts bombard the nucleus of the atom with particles, usually neutrons, driven at enormous speed. If the electrical voltage generated is not sufficiently powerful, the particles are deflected. But as the voltage is raised to the proper amount, the particles reach the speed at which they are able to split the nucleus. It is the sum total of millions of such releases of energy that make up this new source of power. But that this type of power will soon become available to the average citizen is disclaimed by scientists like Harvard's James B. Conant and leading industrial physicists. That is, I take it, Professor Wheeler, you feel this question of trying to beat the radiation. By 1934, Italy's Enrico Fermi and Francis Frederick Joliot had made substantial progress. Meanwhile, in America, scientists like Arthur H. Compton, Harold C. Urey were carrying on intensive research. Laboratory. Simultaneously with scientists at Columbia, California, and Johns Hopkins, Tuve and his colleagues succeeded within 48 hours in checking the reported findings of the German physicist. Kill the lights. No longer any doubt about it. That uranium is splitting into at least two big parts. Those biggest kicks are nearly 100 million electron volts at Columbia University. Working under his supervision were Dr. Leo Zillard and Dr. Fermi, who were laying the groundwork for a chain reaction in uranium. Encouraged by their successful progress, Szilard discussed with Dr. Einstein in the summer of 1939 the results of their findings and stressed the urgent need for action by the U.S. government. Conscious of the disaster which would inevitably follow if Nazi Germany should be the first to succeed in releasing atomic energy, Dr. Einstein decided to write a personal letter to the president. Laboratories for exhaustive study of every method offering any hope of success. In September 1942, 5,000 people quickly became the fifth largest city in the state. Mobilized to carry out the most formidable engineering job in history were thousands of the nation's industrial firms of every size and type. To keep the most closely guarded secret of the war, technicians and even scientists were strictly limited to knowledge of the specific tasks to which they were assigned. Working on seemingly unrelated jobs, many employees were not even sure they were producing anything. And few workers had any conception of the fabulous costs involved. Here it is, General Groves, plutonium. Well, that's uh, the first time I've seen it. If you don't mind, I wish you'd hold that under it, because after all, there's uh, about $50 million uh, in that testing. Finally, after three years' work and an expenditure of $2 billion, the atomic experts were ready to test their first bomb. Before dawn on July 16, 1945, at the Alamogordo Army Air Base in New Mexico, a small band of military and civilian technicians waited nervously. Two minutes to go. Stretched out on the sand, tensely expectant, were General Groves, Dr. Bush, and Dr. Conant.
In the control shack was Dr. J.R. Oppenheimer, who, assisted by Dr. I. Robbie and others, had directed the making of the bomb itself. The automatic control's got it now. Rob, this time the stakes are really high. It's going to work all right, Robert, and I'm sure we'll never be sorry for it. Well, in 40 seconds, we'll know. Minus 30 seconds. Minus 20 seconds. Minus 10 seconds. Minus 5 seconds. as set forth in the Atomic Energy and Research and Production. The Sandia Corporation, Los Alamos Scientific Laboratory, and the Lawrence Radiation Laboratory are principal installations doing research and the use of active material is also conducted at the Lawrence Radiation Laboratory at Livermore, California, and is administered by the San Francisco Operations Office. When a new weapon is being developed and accepted for production as a stockpile model, Work begins at the production installation. For example, the Bendix Aviation Corporation operates the Kansas City plant and through their subcontractors produce ballistic cases, electronic equipment and hardware for weapons. Mason and Hanger, Silas Mason Company, operate the Pantex plant in Amarillo, Texas to produce high explosive components. And in Rocky Flats, Colorado, the nuclear capsule components produced by Development Command. The mission of the Special Weapons Center includes the responsibility for ensuring weapon compatibility to delivery vehicles and providing drop test assistance to the Atomic Energy Commission. Wartime atomic energy facilities as Oak Ridge, Tennessee, where the scarce uranium isotope U-235 is separated from refined natural uranium by the gaseous diffusion process. The Hanford, Washington Active Material Production Plant where uranium-238, the most abundant isotope in natural uranium, is converted into a completely new fissionable element known as plutonium-239. The Los Alamos Scientific Laboratory in New Mexico, where the know-how to use this active material is developed and where our wartime weapons were fabricated and many other lesser known but still vitally important facilities. Practically all of the production and research work at the Atomic Energy Commission is research, develops and supervises programs of research in or involving the physical sciences, including new equipment, new methods of instrumentation, also in the dissemination of technical information. The Division of Production develops and directs the production of active material and manages related AEC installations and community activities. The Division of Biology and Medicine develops and supervises programs related to biology, medicine, biophysics, and is active in the program of making radioactive material available to medical science. The Division of Reactor Development develops and directs the use of atomic energy as the source of power, including the development of related equipment.
Technical Services, the DASA provides up-to-date technical information on all weapons and test and handling equipment. Chief DASA is charged with the overall surveillance of the stockpile and is required to advise the Secretary of Defense as to the technical status of the stockpile. One of the primary vehicles for accomplishing this function is through the conduct of technical inspections.